Here's how you mount your cloud storage into your Elf hosted apps. From your Elf dashboard, go to our clone UI. The first time you'll be prompted for a password. You can click login, it doesn't actually need a password. Now you can see your, your basic R clone instance. From here, go to configs, and we're gonna create a new type of remote. Every remote is a definition of some cloud storage. Click on new config. Give it a name and select your type. Depending what type you choose, you'll be prompted on the next window for parameters. For this test, I'm just using an HTTP type. My HTTP remote only needs one value, which I'll paste in here. But depending on what you use, if you use S3 or Backblaze or Google Drive, you may be asked for more complicated attributes. Click on Next to continue, and you're done. You've made your remote. To confirm that the remote works, go to Explorer, pick your remote, and open it. Now, this is the contents of this URL. Elf Hosted will automatically mount your remote. And if you now were to browse in File Browser, you would see the contents of your mount show up under the rclone folder. The same files should be visible to any of your Elf hosted apps. Some remotes are very hard to configure through the UI. For example, an AWS compatible remote has so many options that it's very hard to know what to do. An alternative you can use is to use our clone locally on your own computer to generate the remote. That would look a bit like this. Assuming you can install our clone locally, you will just run our clone space config. This will create your default configuration file. And just like with the UI, you'll create a new remote. Once again, you get to choose from a list of pre-configured remotes. But this time they're a sensible default set, so you can skip a lot of the more complicated questions. In this case, I'm gonna hit enter for the default. Here's my access key, secret key. I'll just pick a default because I don't know. Enter my region. And when I'm not sure, I'll just hit enter. I choose not to edit the advanced config. I say, yes, this is okay. And I quit. I can then use a command like uh, rclone ls, name of the remote, name of the bucket, to confirm that rclone is working. More importantly, if I look at the rclone config file, I'll find the remote defined really easily in this init format. I can copy this remote, go back to my dashboard, edit my rclone remotes, and paste it directly into this file. Once I've saved this, the remote becomes available to rclone. There it is there. It should have, it will attempt to mount. If the mount fails, there'll just be nothing in this folder. So if I was to now look one directory up in my S3 folder, there's nothing there, which is expected because I used test credentials. So this is the mechanism you'll use to attach any cloud storage that you want to your Elf hosted stack without having to buy any other products or make any further configurations. It's all self-service now. If you needed to debug further why a mount wasn't working, you might go to the Kubernetes dashboard if you're prompted, you can just skip the token. Look at your pods. Find the rclone UI pod. Click the three dots and look at logs. In this case, rclone is complaining that my upstream HTTP source has rate limited me. And if you needed to restart rclone, you could click on the three buttons and delete. 
as the pod is deleted and recreated, all of the mounts will be recreated and once again visible in the file browser. 